Today's news! Today's news! Milton bears down. This is going to be a historic hurricane for the state of Florida. Supreme Court considers ghost guns. They're essentially untraceable firearms. Voting in a disaster zone. This is going to be the biggest challenge we face. Good morning, I'm Steve Kathan. With the CBS World News Roundup, time's running out along Florida's western coast to prepare for Hurricane Milton. The storm sideswiped Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. It strengthened to a Category 5 yesterday and is now a Category 4. Meteorologist Stephanie Abrams at the Weather Channel says Milton could have a storm surge of up to 15 feet when it arrives late tomorrow or early Thursday. It will slice through the state, causing widespread tree, power, and structural damage. Milton is expected to be a large and powerful hurricane at landfall. If you're in the eye wall, you should plan for gusts over 100 miles per hour. All this wind will produce crashing waves and potentially record-crushing surge as tall as a one-story building or more for Tampa and Sarasota. CBS's Jonathan Bigliotti is in Tampa where there are calls for people to leave their homes. We do not have to have any loss of life go to higher ground. Some have taken those warnings to heart with heavy traffic out of the Tampa Bay area. But at Tampa General Hospital, many patients are too unwell to be evacuated. The hospital has erected a removable watertight flood wall around its exterior to keep the storm surge at bay. If we had a 12-foot surge, does that change anything on how this performs? It shouldn't, but we don't know that yet. At least nine counties at this point under a mandatory evacuation including Lee County, two hours south, and that's when the cold out does this for us to cold. Good morning to you. Jonathan, good morning. This area could see anywhere from 10 to 15 feet of storm surge given Milton's current path, and sadly, this is a community still rebuilding after Hurricane Ian, which catastrophically hit Fort Myers Beach back in 2022. So everyone's taking this very seriously. The Lee County Sheriff's Office is warning residents to get out right they can. Misinformation over paying for storm damage is now making headlines in the presidential race. As we hear from CBS's Ouija Jang. I think we're going to do great in North Carolina because the response has been so bad to the hurricane. They have, this response has been horrific. Former President Trump has falsely claimed at least 15 times that FEMA is diverting funds or only helping Democrats recover from Helene. Vice President Harris called out the misinformation. It's extraordinarily irresponsible. It's about him. It's not about you. Last night, 60 Minutes pressed the Vice President on top campaign issues like immigration. Solutions are at hand, and from day one, literally, we have been offering solutions. But, but the numbers do quadruple. And the, the numbers the today, world. because of what we have done, we have cut the flow of illegal immigration by half and on her gun. I have a Glock. I've had it for quite some time. While on foreign policy, last night Trump used an October 7th remembrance event in Miami to criticize the Biden administration. This morning, the U.S. Supreme Court takes up a controversial gun rights case. This involves what are known as ghost guns. With no serial numbers, owners build them out of parts that are hard to trace. CBS's Jan Crawford spoke to a family that paid a high personal price for one of these guns bought online. Denise Week was forced to consider the unthinkable. Am I going to have to plan a funeral for my 17-year-old? When her son, Guy Boyd, went from football games and hanging out with friends to fighting for his life. I'm crying at the left week now because I have a bullet fragment in my brain. Boyd is still recovering more than three years later after he was shot, allegedly by a friend, fooling around with a ghost gun he purchased online. They shoot the same round. They have the same effect. Baltimore City sued ghost gun manufacturers to stop the sale in the state of Maryland. The city's police commissioner showed it how these build-it-yourself guns are untraceable. Ordered online, the parts ship. They weren't put together, but it only takes a very minor tool to be able to put it together, and you've got a fully operational firearm with no 
traces. And because no ID is required to buy them, police say it led to an increase in gun crime, especially by teens. In 2022, the ATF decided to regulate ghost guns nationwide under existing firearms laws. But now the industry says the ATF went too far and asked the Supreme Court to step in. Their job is to enforce the law, surely not to rewrite the law. That is the job of Congress. Guy Boyd has sued the manufacturer of the ghost 